Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Don Hasbro. And I'm Jeff Herndon. The Pope making history tonight. His plane touched down just outside Washington, D.C. this afternoon. He was immediately greeted by the President and First Lady. But his six-day U.S. tour will take him from Capitol Hill and the United Nations to the streets, prisons, and inner city shelters, where he will address poverty, climate change, immigration, along with Catholic doctrines. Our political editor, Mike Flannery, will be with the Pope every step of the way. Mike, this excitement we haven't seen in a long time. What's it like in Washington tonight? There is enormous excitement here on the campus of Catholic University, Dawn. The Pope tomorrow will go to the White House. He will hold a prayer service with hundreds of American bishops. But the emotional highlight for him and many Catholics takes place right here. A large choir and orchestra were rehearsing for the canonization ceremony evoking the sacred sacramental side of the pontiff's first visit to the United States. There is also a frankly political side to the trip. We watched as a group of women who had walked a hundred miles arrived at the shrine of the Immaculate Conception. They saluted the Pope's support for comprehensive immigration reform. Chicagoan Maria del Carmen Macias is a Mexican immigrant now a U.S. citizen, here with other members of the Service Employees International Union. They'd like the church to denounce state of Illinois budget cuts likely to reduce the earnings of Macias and other child care workers like her. Many child care providers have uh, taken the uh, tough decision to close their doors on children because they just cannot handle it anymore. You know, uh, so, but you know, my message is, you know, we need to keep on fighting. For us, it's not political. Malak Mendoza and her husband, Yul, came all the way from Aurora, Illinois, to see the canonization of Father Unipero Serra, a Franciscan missionary to California in the 1700s. The families talked for decades of seeing the Pope in Rome. And we just can't seem to make it because we're always taking care of other people in the family that need help from us and so on and so forth. Now Rome comes to you. The Pope comes to you. Exactly what it is, you know, and it, this is really... I don't know how to say it. I mean, it's just a blessing from God. That's all it is. The Mendozas from Aurora and I were all impressed by that rehearsal for tomorrow's canonization ceremony that we eavesdropped on. It's really going to be impressive. The music just spectacular, Jeff and Don. All right, so Mike, you and I were there, I guess it seems like a few months ago, but it really yeah. wasn't a few years ago for the inauguration. How does the traffic and security compare to then, now? Today, not so bad, but uh, I can tell you, uh, Dawn, already uh, streets are being closed here. Uh, this uh, town is going to be snarled mm -hmm. tomorrow. Uh, the Pope especially, he loves to be impromptu. If he hops out of the Pope Mobile, um, that's just going to be one more reason to make it difficult to move around this town. Back oh, to you. Oh, yes, and that's what the security team is worried yeah, about. No doubt. All right, Mike Flannery, live in Washington, D.C. tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. The